dismay, disunity. Serious one. May, June, August, take note of the month. Step into the future. Be the first to know. Find out what God has to say concerning your situation, your country, and the world. God is still saying something. A compilation of prophecies concerning individuals, nations, and the world at large, together with their confirmations. I'm safely. What is the meaning of that? Is, uh, the prophet of God shall say that which he shall live to see accomplished. That is why you will not see a prophet where there is a debate. We don't suggest. We talk with power. In every situation, God has something to say. Find out what God has to say. God is still saying something. Prophecy does not refer to the prophecy of things on head and unknown, but of both announced and unknown. Prophecy implies a special insight into revealed truth and a great faculty of making them and their consequences known to others. That is prophecy. Prophets were motivated to utter the deep things of God for the conviction of sin, for edification and comfort. Emmanuel TV, bringing you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Changing nations, changing the world. Our love for Christ is the basis of our love for one another. Love, kindness, faithfulness, and the giving spirit were born at Christmas. Christmas Greetings from Emmanuel TV. Hallelujah! Are you ready? What a song we got to praise! What a God we have to worship! And what a future lies before us! Lies before you and lies before me! Unto what the Son is born, a Son is given! His name shall be called Emmanuel! Come on, let's go.
vision. The journey continues. The vision remains the same. Change lives, change nations, and change the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel TV. Changing lives, changing nations, changing the world. His word. God's word is his gift to mankind. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that Christ and his word are one. God's word reflects his character and points us the way to salvation, healing, deliverance, and all of God's blessing. By looking into the word and acting on it, we bring Jesus Christ on the scene. To bring Jesus on the scene, the living word must live in you, grow in you, and get into your blood to gain supremacy over you. Learn to dream again as we look to God through his word by his spirit. Get ready to open your heart to God's word, faith, and spirit as we listen to what God has to say in today's Standard for Life. Reign, Jesus, reign. Reign, Jesus, reign. Say, reign, Lord Jesus, reign.
Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with me. Tell your neighbor, God is with me. This is not a formality, it is a reality. Tell your neighbor, God is with me. If God Almighty is with me, who shall be against me? If God Almighty is with the nation, who shall be against her? If God is with you, who shall be against you? Is it sickness? Is it tests and trials? This means victory is assured. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happiness that will stand the test of time. Joy that will stand the test of time. Tell your neighbor, it is available. It is available. In Jesus' name. Yes, my name is Racine. <laughs> Brethren, God Almighty does nothing without his word. We just need a word to usher us into a new season in life. The mystery is hidden in God's word. Tell your neighbor, this is the word. This book is called The Step. Between you and the cure. Our message shall be taken from this book. God does nothing without his word. I said the step. Tell you about the step. The step between me and the cure. The step between me and that promise. We have a role to play. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the reason why we are celebrating. Jesus Christ is the reason why we are here. He is the common center of our unity. I'm here to say that Jesus Christ never, 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 never say goodbye. He's not missed today. Hallelujah. Let me take you to page 14. Turn your book, page 14. Let me read. It says this. Never confuse two things. Never ever confuse these two. God desires an abundant life for you. God desires an abundant life for you. The devil wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10 verse 10. Never confuse these two things. Jesus Christ has come to give you life, to give me life, abundant life, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your family, in your way. But the enemy come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I continue. It is not all up to God. Certainly, it is not all up to you. You have a role to play. Tell your neighbor you have a role to play. I have a role to play. Remember, God's word refreshes our mind. God's spirit renews our strength. It says, Certainly it is not all up to you. Your role is to have faith in the finished works of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, have faith in the finished works of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's duty is to keep his promise. In God's way of doing things, brethren, we need to understand this truth. He says, in God's way of doing things, these two things never, never conflict. You have a role to play and God has a duty. It continues and says, Obeying God's word at first seems hard until we come to see that all he asks 
is for our good. For my good and for your good. Praise the Lord. Remember, Christmas is an opportunity to give. What can you give? Remember, there are four kinds of people. Those who add in people's life. Those who multiply in people's life. But we have those who divide and those who subtract. Hallelujah. Tell me, it's a time of giving. It's a time to give. This is our message. The only begotten son. Tell your neighbor, the only begotten son. The only begotten son. So let me take you to the book of Luke. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Luke chapter 2. I start my reading from verse 8. It says, Now there were in some country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Verse 11. For there is born to you this day, tell your neighbor, this day, in the city of David, a Savior. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a God we have to worship. What a Son we have to praise. And what a future lies before us. God has a Son, the only begotten Son. Jesus Christ. The Bible says, long before he was born, prophet Isaiah, in chapter 9, verse 6, herald the arrival of a child who would become our eternal joy. Long before he was born into this world, prophet Isaiah herald the coming of a child who would become our eternal joy, our eternal hope. Of his birth, three things were promised to us. I want you to repeat with me. Say, of his birth, three things were promised to us. Three things who would become the basis of our eternal hope. Not just hope, eternal hope. The Bible says, a glorious, repeat after me, a glorious, a glorious light, a glorious light that will dispel every shade of darkness in our lives. You know what darkness means? Sickness, disease, trouble. A light that will dispel all shades of darkness. A light both for comfort and direction for the people of God. We will no longer walk in darkness. Hallelujah. The Bible says, a glorious increase with complete joy arising from his birth. And the Bible went on to say, a glorious liberty with enlargement and good reason. What does this mean to you and me? The transforming promise Jesus Christ offers you and me is liberation. Freedom. Tell your neighbor, freedom. 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 The design of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to break the yoke of sin 
and Satan. The design of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to break the yoke of sin and Satan and thus remove the burden of guilt, remove the burden of condemnation, remove the burden of corruption because the Bible says righteousness gives us ability to be set free from fear, guilt and condemnation. Praise the Lord. Let someone say praise the Lord. Let someone say praise the Lord. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So love He the world that He gave us His Son, who yields that is life and atonement for sin, and open the life gates that all may. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Tell you never the only begotten Son. God so loved the world that He gave His priceless possession. His Son, not sons, His only begotten Son. In Him, God has invested much power and honor so we may be happy in the presence of God. Tell you never God so loved the world that He gave His priceless possession. God gave His most priceless possession to produce a family. The Bible says today millions are born again through this seed. And the book of Luke chapter 3 it says, But all flesh shall see in him the salvation of the Lord. Believing in Christ Jesus is the answer. Believing in Christ Jesus is the answer to the human dilemma. What do I mean by that? Everyone desires breakthrough, peace and comfort. Money cannot bring peace and comfort. Treasures of the world cannot give peace and comfort. Because Jesus knows that you and I, we have a living soul. The blessing of Jesus enriches our soul for eternity. Tell you but let us live for eternity. Let us live for eternity. Tell you never come to him. Come to him. When we look at life, many are in trouble. Many seem as if there is no hope. Many are in want. Many are in lack. And Jesus said, I have come to give abundant life. And many are living a life of fear and trouble. But I'm here to tell you for the people of the world. Trouble, poverty, sickness, and the likes are considered as a poison that kills man's happiness and zeal to move forward. But for the people of God, trouble, poverty, sickness are a driving force to lead us to higher aspiration in Christ Jesus. For a man of faith finds encouragement in that which is discouraging and come closer to God. 
So test and try the troubles you are facing today as a Christian. Only serve as a means to move you closer to God instead of discouraging us. These serves are the means to move us closer to God and they are the most effective means by which we can assess our position with God. Tell your neighbor, what is your position with God? Ask yourself, what is my position with God? Tell your neighbor, are you in want? Come to Jesus. Are you experiencing a life of defeat? Come to Jesus. Many today have taken action that have changed the course of the history of their lives. Many are in poverty. Many are suffering. They don't know that the solution has come. Jesus Christ never says goodbye. Tell you know, once again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. No matter what you are going through. Are you a murderer? Are you an arm robber? Are you an enemy of God? Why are you an enemy of God? Paul say, I was an enemy of God. I was persecuting this gospel. But he became one of the greatest apostles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul was a state prosecutor and became a great apostle. Moses was a murderer and became a great leader. I'm here to tell you there is hope. No one is too good. No one is too bad to qualify for God's grace. Tell your neighbor, no one is too good. No one is too bad to qualify for God's grace. The Bible says, yesterday is history. Today is opportunity. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a common center between yesterday and tomorrow. What do I mean? Yesterday was mistake. Yesterday was defeat. Yesterday was failure. But today is opportunity. Today is opportunity. Tomorrow is mystery. Tell your neighbor the mystery of grace. God takes unlikely people. God takes unlikely people and puts them in his palace 
for eternity. Their peace is, their victory is, and it is yours. Tell your neighbor, it is mine. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Today is opportunity. Life never completely closes the door to opportunity. Life does not just happen to us. It's all about choices. Repeat after me and get it into your heart. By deciding to make better choices. By deciding to make better choices. You are turning your life from yesterday's zero to today's hero. You are turning your life from yesterday's defeat to today's victory. And victory is yours. It is assured. That victory is assured. It is certain. It is paid for. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So don't let your condition mislead you. No matter the condition you find yourself in, you find condemned, rejected, there is hope for you. Jesus Christ never considered your past to determine your future. He never considered your past to determine your future. Mistakes are correctable. The greatest love God gave us is that opportunity to correct our mistakes. Today is correction, and correction makes future possible. Correction makes future possible. Correction makes a leader. What does it take? There's one lesson we need to learn. Those who are rich, in every sense of the word, they know that life is a learning experience. Those who are rich, those who are victorious in every sense of the word, they know that life is a learning experience. What do we learn? Brethren, Jesus Christ is a Democrat. Jesus Christ is a leader, not a ruler. He never forces himself to you. He never imposes his will to you. He allows us to exhaust all the worldly advantages we feel we have so that when we have learned our lesson, we would value him. When we have exhausted all our mental and emotional resources, we can realize that we can no longer rely on ourselves. We need something. We need someone stronger, someone wiser, someone smarter than you and me. Our Lord Jesus Christ who raises the dead was Paul's strength. What is your choice today? Make a better decision that will change your life today. Love was born at Christmas. Happiness was born at Christmas. Victory was born at Christmas. It is offered freely. A steadfast look at the crucified one will never look in vain at the great physician. A steadfast look at the crucified one will never look in vain at the great deliverer. He say, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. I will be with you to the end of the earth. Brethren, no man that influences the thinking of human beings has ever said this. I say, no man that influences the thoughts of man has never said this. No Old Testament prophet, no Isaac, not Moses, but Jesus said it. The transforming promise Christ offers you and me is liberation. And liberation received on the basis of faith is comfortable and long-lasting. So what's the heart of the matter? Brethren, if you put your trust in him, the Bible says, 
you will never be disappointed in time or eternity. I say, Merry Christmas. I say to you, Happy New Year. I say to you, Happy New Year with a joy that nothing, nothing, nothing can break. So brethren, whether in good times or hard times, victory is yours. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 12 to 13, I can face all conditions, whether I'm hungry, whether I'm full, whether I have plenty, whether I lack. This means when you meet Jesus, you will lack nothing, you will want nothing. When you meet Jesus, you will be able to accommodate yourself in every conditions of life. By His grace, tell another, by His grace, I am able to accommodate myself to every condition in life. By His strength, I must depend on his strength to teach me to teach me to steady my heart in the face of prosperous time in the face of difficult times we need him tell the neighbor you need him experience has shown how easy it is to be taken away from God. Experience has shown how easy it is for us to quit, to abandon our post in the face of temporary crises and trials. But the Bible says, bless he who make the Lord his strength. With his strength, you are victorious. So let your mind rise. Tell me, let your mind rise and seek the things that are above. Because Jesus lives. He never says goodbye. By faith, listen to him, telling you, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy burden, I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, I will give you peace. Do you have burden? Come to Jesus. Are you sick? Come to him. He is the answer to all, all the fundamental issues of life. Never a sickness Jesus Christ cannot heal. Never a burden Jesus cannot remove. He is the author of our life. The author of our faith. Brethren, as you are standing in his presence, if you are saying in your mind, how can I achieve it? Brethren, you are not called upon to look within you and see how much faith you have. You are called to look to Jesus. And take the faith the Lord is ready to give you now. Faith is present tense. Tell me faith is present tense. Faith acts now. Faith believes now. Faith receives now. Tell your neighbor to live the promise of hope is to live in the present. Reach out. Reach out. Because Jesus is reachable. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. He's close to you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Trouble day no last no way. Remember there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know.
Never you are saved to save others. We are God's people. We are God's representative. Tell your neighbor, you are a servant of righteousness. So let your light shine. Let your good deeds shine. I'm here to remember you that love is the greatest, greatest. Christian virtue. We are called to respond to all human needs. Brethren, we serve Jesus Christ when we serve those in need. Remember when Jesus was born, the Bible says wise men from the east came and poured gifts. Giving is the very basis of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we are called to respond to all human needs. When you say, let your light shine around us out there, there are many who are expecting you and me to put a quality smile on their faces. The Bible says they are in want, so we can be their benefactor. Many are fatherless, so we can be their father, their mothers. Many out there are in loneliness, so we can be their companion. Remember to be like Jesus Christ, that is our goal. And to be like him, we must live like Jesus. We must be servants of righteousness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, O oh Holy Spirit, enter my soul. Enter my heart. Establish your kingdom in our praises. Establish your kingdom in our worship. Enlighten my mind with the knowledge of eternal things. I leave you here in faith and hope to see you in faith in Jesus' name. Thank you.
you may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Let me say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Emmanuel, view us all over the world. Where can we go from his presence? When you look at the book of Matthew 2, verse 11, when you look at this critically, they say, When they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Given, given. The wise men came from east with their offering and gift. The Bible says they knelt down and worshipped him with humility and reverence. The wise men came from east with their gifts and offering when they saw the child with his mother Mary they presented the gifts by living down with humility and reverence. Thus giving became the very basic of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very what? Basis of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, he planted this seed, this seed to produce a family. Today, millions are born again through the sea. God so loved the world, He planted this seed to produce a family today. Millions are born again through the seed. You are one of the million. Tell your neighbor, I'm one of the million. Again? How do we show appreciation? That is the question. How do we show appreciation? Well, we give everything the Lord has given us, our strength, our love, our faith. Take note of that. Our strength, our faith, our humility, our love, we are not only meeting the need of God's people, we are at the same time showing appreciation for his provision. How do we show appreciation? When we give 
every good thing the Lord has given us. Name it your love, your kindness, your strength. your faith you are not only meeting the needs of God's people but at the same time showing what appreciation for his provision so I will want to leave you for a moment what you are about to watch is a way of telling you, look, rededicate yourself. Rededicate yourself to charity, giving. Give what your life depends on, what you cherish most, with humility and what? Reverence. Everything you have, everything you can think about is actually being borrowed from God. What have you to give? Tell your neighbor, everything you have, everything you can think of is actually being borrowed from God. What have you to give? Rededicate yourself to the art of giving. Not just Christmas alone, but rededicate yourself art of giving. Don't only give what you do not need, but what you cherish, what your life depends on, give it some time. So thank you as we watch. In this festive season, the Emmanuel TV team are packing bags upon bags of top quality rice. There are hundreds of them. Their destination, those in need. Often rejected and isolated, many spend Christmas alone. The aim of Emmanuel TV team is to put quality smiles on their faces this festive season. The vehicles make their way through the streets, packed with Christmas gifts that will make a tangible difference in the lives of those in need. The team arrives at their first destination, a slum littered with refuse. Could people really live here? Could people really live in a place that is not fit for human beings? With the amount of litter, congested alleyways, one can only imagine the stench. Surveying the scene, the Emmanuel TV team find this place. This is the community shower and bathroom. These are basins which they use to wash. Among the inhabitants of this community are the blind those with leprosy and other diseases. They live here, far away from normal communities, struggling to fend for themselves. Poverty having taken its toll, many suffer as a result of their hopeless and helpless state. These are the wells that the community draws its water from. They are not only dry,
but contaminated. Today, the church is being awakened to her responsibilities towards the needy. This is not the time to sit on the fence. It is time to act faith. James 2, verse 14 to 20. The Emmanuel TV team call upon members of the community to receive the Christmas gifts they had brought for them. Forming a human chain, lines of blind people are led to a central point in the community where the Emmanuel